Washington has hit out at Israel for authorizing 3,000 new settler homes in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Israel's move came a day after the UN General Assembly upgraded Palestine to being a non-member observer. Well, the U.S. called the construction decision counterproductive to peace negotiations on a two-state solution. Palestinians say the lands in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, which were occupied by Israel in the 1960s, must be returned to them. But since then, the number of Israelis living there has we risen completed. to half a million. But for the Palestinians, the all machine. settlement building must stop before any peace talks begin. Well, let's get uh, more now from human rights activist Steve Hind in London. Uh, thanks for joining us. Now, the Palestinians say Israel's settlement decision right after the UN vote is a provocation. How do you see it? Well, I see it as very important. When the US calls these settlement expansions illegal, um, when they call them counterproductive, we should be using the word illegal because that's very clearly what this act is. A further 3,000 homes to be built uh, in a legally occupied uh, Palestinian territory. And this is a further obstacle to peace. If we're serious about a two-state solution and if we're serious about moving towards that, then there's no way that this further settlement expansion can be seen as in any way a move towards getting back around the table and moving towards the peace talks that both sides so desperately need to see the, to see the peace. If that's the case then, what future do you see for negotiations on a two-state solution with this continuing op occupation of what Palestinians claim is their land? Sorry, could you just repeat that question? Yes, I mean, what future do you think there is then for a two-state solution uh, with uh, this continuing occupation? Well, clearly, I believe that we're further away from a two-state solution than we've ever been before. But this isn't to say that we're any closer to any other form of peace process. Um, with the international consensus firmly behind a two-state solution, for me, this has to be uh, the most pragmatic path for us to move peace along uh, to try and obtain the peace that both sides so desperately need. Inherent within the two-state state solution has to be the upholding of international humanitarian law and only negotiations based around this standard uh, of upholding international humanitarian law can any peace negotiations take place. So, Yes, we're further away from uh, a two-state solution than perhaps we've ever been before, but only by building on the international consensus that we've got that Israel and even the United States are further away from can we hope to move towards uh, a, a long-lasting peace. So realistically then, how much pressure can be put on Israel by the Palestinians uh, with them now being able to theoretically go to The Hague or the International Criminal Court at some point in the future? Well, absolutely. I mean... So the having Palestinians having access to the International Criminal Court was put forward by my own government, the UK government, as an obstacle towards peace. And now for me, I find this utterly shocking. The possibility that my government might be saying that having access to justice, having access to accountability, could somehow be an obstacle to peace. What I'd like both the UK government and um, unilaterally through the European Union, I'd like them to be making much clearer statements about how whoever the perpetrator is and whoever the victim is, there needs to be justice brought through established international mechanisms. And now, in the latest upsurge in violence in Gaza, we've seen uh, documented proof that Israel uh, launched indiscriminate attacks, i.e. they failed to distinguish between combatant and civilian. In the same way that Hamas uh, rocket attacks are very clearly either aimed at civilian, which is a violation of international humanitarian law in the sense it targets civilian, um, or by the indiscriminate nature of their arsenal. OK, it means OK, that OK. Forgive me, we'll have to leave it there. We're out of time. Human rights activist Steve Hind, thank you for that.